Hello and welcome to Spirit of Life. I'm Mirella Rich. Today our guest is David Parks, who had a healing of Crohn's disease through Our Lady or Queen of Peace's intercessory in Medjugorje. Medjugorje is a little village in Bosnia-Herzegovina where Our Lady has been appearing since June the 24th, 1981 and still is today with messages of peace and love to all the world. Welcome to the program. And what we usually do is we start the, with Mary's message. So we'll lead, re, lead with Our Lady's message and then we'll talk about your Super. experience. So the latest message from the 25th of February 2008, Our Lady Queen of Peace said to everyone in the world, Dear children, in this time of grace, I am calling all of you to open yourselves and to live the commandments which God has given you that they may lead you through the sacraments on the way of conversion. The world and worldly temptations are testing you. But you, little children, look at God's creatures which he has given to you in beauty and humility and little children Love God above everything and he will lead you on the way of salvation. Thank you for having responded to my call. Well, welcome to the program, Good to be David. Here. Good. And it, we'd love to hear all about your story because I'm sure it would relate to the message as well with conversion Absolutely. and healing. Absolutely. And so could you tell, start off by telling your experience and what you've been telling lots of people? Yeah, well, my experience of Medjugorje started back in 1989. Uh, and I went to Medjugorje uh, spiritually bankrupt. I went with, according to the doctors, two weeks to live. Wow. I'd suffered this illness called Crohn's disease, and I suffered it for 14 years, and I had 10 major surgeries. Gee. So when I got the illness in 1977, I was a professional soccer player, mm. played against Pelé, George Best, Bobby Charlton. Wow. And then I had to give up the football through the illness, and then I got involved in professional music. Oh, beautiful. So the illness persisted for 14 years. So as I said, I went to Medjugorje, um, really cranky, uh, under duress. I didn't want to be there because God and I were not friends. Uh, the reason being my eldest boy, Ken, was born with an incurable illness called cystic fibrosis. Mm. So I was angry with God. I couldn't understand why God would inflict such an illness on a newborn baby. Mm. And then my own illness got really bad. So again, I just thought, God, you're not dealing me a good deck of cards. So I decided in the immortal words of that great song by Frank Sinatra, I decided to live my life my way. Mm -hmm. which was the slippery slope to mm. disaster. So I went kicking and screaming. I went with 155 religious maniacs, but we had a very, very special uh, spiritual director from Chicago, and his name was Father Peter Mary Rookie. Yeah. And Father Rookie had got great intercessory powers of healing. And in the graveyard at the back of the Church of St. James, through the intercession of Father Rookie, and the anointing of holy oil, I had an instant physical healing. Wow. The aches, the pains, the vomiting, the diarrhea instantly disappeared. And you're in the cemetery? In the cemetery, of all places. I knew going out <laughs> that I had one foot in the grave, but I didn't realize <laughs> that the Lord was going to bring me to the graveyard to make me whole again. Isn't that amazing? Whose idea was it to go to the cemetery? Well, Father Rookie uh, was the only place that he could have a healing service, okay. you know. And uh, I rested in the spirit for 20 minutes. So, And uh, wow. I'd never been to a healing service before. So it was all uh, new to me. Uh, I was there for two hours. He was laying hands. People were resting in the spirit. And of course, I was saying this was hysteria. Mm. I'd never experienced Once one does it, they're all going to do it. Nobody wants to be left standing. They all have to be seen what they're getting on the ground. So if they don't, they were going to fake it. So I really ridiculed them. But this wonderful, wonderful thing happened to me. And uh, I was so grateful to the Lord for, for that happening. But that wasn't the miracle of Medjugorje. The real miracle of Medjugorje took place two days later 
up on the hill of apparitions. Um, at that point in my life, I, I was quite troubled. Uh, I had no peace in my life. Um, the, the difficulty with having a child with uh, an incurable illness uh, drove a wedge between my wife Anne and myself. So I was a naughty boy. Uh, on the second week of August 1987, I left Anne and the children. I got involved in another relationship. November of that year, the kids were having a really difficult time, so I decided I would go home for their benefit and things might improve between Anne and I, but they didn't. So the following January, I upped and left again, causing absolute mayhem. But in that period of time, I used to go visit with Anne and the kids every Tuesday and Thursday. And this was after the healing, was it? No, this, this was before I went to Medjugorje. Okay, this was all before. I was before. just saying that I had no peace in my yeah, life. Yeah, in the past, yeah. So I was really looking for peace. Yeah. And after the healing in Medjugorje, uh, I would listen to people's conversations and they would always talk about the peace that they felt. And that was up on the hill of apparitions. Mm. So I really and truly needed the peace. It had caused mayhem in my life prior to that. So we took off one day. It actually turned out to be, as we would call it now, Divine Mercy Sunday. And mm. on every Sunday in Medjugorje, the parish climbs the apparition hill with the pilgrims. So we climbed with the pilgrims and it was quite full. So Anne and I came back down the mountainside and Anne sat on this big rock and I stood beside her just looking into the valley below and then I felt the urge to pray and then I couldn't pray because I'd been away from my faith for eight years so I remember trying to say the Hail Mary I couldn't the Our Father I couldn't and then I got agitated so now Anna was sitting on the rock observing me when she saw me getting agitated she jumped down off the rock to talk with me and as she did I just turned to her I outstretched my arms I embraced her I apologized to her for all the hurt that had caused her, all the pain and suffering that had caused her children. And she started to cry. That's and as soon as she started to cry, she threw her arms around my Aww. neck. And then because of that little gesture of love, I started to cry. Oh, so we cried so in beautiful. one another's arms for about 10 minutes. We have to go to a break now, but we're mm. not going to lose track on Super. this. You're watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us. We'll be back with more very shortly. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Spirit of Life. I'm Mirella Rich. We're here with David Parks, who had a healing in Medjugorje, little village in Bosnia-Herzegovina, where Our Lady's been appearing since June the 24th, 1981. Welcome back to the program. Good to be back. And this is Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Mother Absolutely. of Jesus. We're talking about the mm -hmm. intercessory healing. And before we left for the break, you were up on the hill crying with your wife. Mm -hmm. But how did you get to the point where you actually got, because you had left her for three months and six months, but how yeah. did you get to the point where you actually got to reconcile with her in Ireland and then come to Medjugorje. Yeah, well, I'd left Anne uh, in August of 87. I went back home in November because things were difficult with the kids and I thought things might improve, but they didn't. So the following January, I left home again. And then in June, I went back home at the invitation of Anne. So she asked we, you to come back? She did. We were, we were home and then on Christmas Eve 1988, I had my ninth surgery. And then on the 7th of January, 1989, I had my 10th surgery. Mm. So it was at a, a benefit concert to help the family with financial difficulties that the invitation came for Anne and I to go to Medjugorje. Ah, and yeah. the benefit con concert was to raise money for you for we your We raised money for my uh, medical expenses, yeah. but um, there was a quirk in it because when the band I had decided to sell tickets, they told them it was for my funeral expenses. Ah. So the Lord has a great sense of humor. Yeah, oh, great but they were, were they joking when they said it was for your funeral expenses? Well, some got mixed up, but no, they, they were convinced. They were really As I said, serious. I was told I had two weeks to live when oh I went to Medjugorje. Yeah, yeah. This so is I was amazing. was that ill. Yeah, I was that ill. Yeah. Wow, so we'll continue with the story. Yeah. So you're up on the mountain. So up on the mountain, uh, Anna jumped down off the rock to, because she thought I was bored. And uh, I embraced her and uh, I said I was sorry for all that had caused her, 
all the hurt to the kiddies and to her parents and family members and friends. She started to cry. Then she threw her arms around my neck because, uh, probably because I said sorry. Yeah, that was And then because of that gesture of love, I started to cry. So we, we yeah. cried in one another's arms That's for about so 10 minutes. Beautiful. But when I stopped crying, I had this most incredible inner peace. Mm. An inner peace that seemed to allow David Parks, me, to live with myself. Mm. So that was the greatest miracle of Medjugorje, not the physical one. Mm. The spiritual one is the greatest of the two miracles I had. To live in peace with who Absolutely. you were. Absolutely. I made yeah. peace with, with the Lord and peace with myself. Mm. And as I said, the, of the two, the uh, spiritual one is the greatest. And so when Father Rookie, he just prayed over you when you had this healing and that yeah. was it, immediately you felt healed? Yeah, I had the, after the, the physical one, I rested in the spirit and when I got up off the ground, there was an intense burning heat in my body. Now, I didn't really recognize that something had really happened apart from the burning. Mm. But immediately after we, we left the graveyard, uh, I went for something to eat. And normally with Crohn's disease, when you eat, you spend, you know, four or five hours in the bathroom either with diarrhea or you're vomiting. Mm. So I left there at a greasy burger mm. and then went up to the house for dinner, had dinner there as well and then went to bed. And it was the following morning that Anne said to me, you know, David, you didn't uh, complain of pain yesterday after what happened in the, in the graveyard. And she said, uh, you're, you're eating everything. You haven't been to the bathroom. And she said, you're beginning to stand up straight. So all I could say to each of those was, oh, God, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So you so didn't kind of notice it was so it subtle. It was the following yeah. day that I realized that something had happened. Everything yeah. had changed. Yeah. 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 Wow. And all he did was just like pray over pray, your head yeah. or hands. He, he anointed me with holy oil. Mm. He placed his hands on my head. And then he, Father Rookie used to always carry a, a crucifix, mm -hmm. which contained the seven relics of the Servite order the servants of Mary, of which he was a member. And one of those saints was St. Peregrine, the cancer saint. Mm -hmm. And uh, so th that, that, that was all. It was just purely through prayer and anointing. And previously to this, did you do anything to change your life at all, like with no. health, diet, sunshine, no, no. fresh air? I, I, I left hospital on the, at the end of January, mm -hmm. uh, having been told, listen, so that was, you left hospital in the end of January, told you got two weeks to I live. I was told I had roughly 12 weeks to live, but by the 12. time I got to, I went in the, f in, uh, the last week of April to Medjugorje. So mm. then at that point they told me, listen, we reckon you have two weeks to live. And during this time, did you feel that you were going to die or did you feel that you weren't no, going to die? I knew, that I was very poorly. I was, uh, uh, I was originally 220 pounds in weight playing soccer and now I'm 99 pounds in weight. I looked like death warmed up. Mm. I was skinny, cheekbones coming through my my cheeks, my eyes somewhere way back in, in my head. I was a sorry sight, wow. a sorry sight. Gee, that, that, that gives hope to so many people just to hear that story. Well, you know, a prayer, a prayer is the most powerful weapon. Mm. And in many messages of Our Lady in Medjugorje, she has said that prayer works miracles. Yeah. And uh, not just with myself, but I've known with Ken, who has been extremely ill uh, two years ago he had uh, he w we were told three times within a space of 12 weeks that he was going to die three times mm. and the doctors after he got better said it was nothing that they did that they said it was all down to prayer the doctors said that doctors, oh, three young wow. doctors part of his team said there's nothing that we've done that has you sitting Isn't in front of Isn't that beautiful? Us. And he's got such an amazing singing voice as well, like you as well, like, <laughs> Kenny, like Father, yeah, like Kenny. Son. <laughs> yeah. It's so beautiful. Uh, His song he's a, he's far a, he's away a blessing. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. he's a blessing. He is God's gift to the Parks family. Yeah. And then how did you get led into the singing path? How, was that, how did <clears> that begin? Uh, I got my illness in 1977. And at that time, there was a big talent contest. Something akin to Australia's Got Talent. Yes. Uh, it was a national competition and somehow I won it. Mm, so wow. uh, it just so happened that I gave up the, the football because of the illness. I couldn't play, couldn't run anymore, mm. but I could still sing. Yeah. But then over that 14 year period of time with the Crohn's disease, I spent more time in hospital than I did, than I did performing. That was the reason we, we got into such financial difficulties. Wow, so you had a lot I of could stress. always sing as a child. 
But soccer was my first love. I ate, slept and drank soccer. You know. And what about now? Which one's your first love? My first love is singing to people and telling people about the love of God and that miracles do happen. Beautiful. We're about to go to a break now. You're watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. Hello and welcome back to Spirit of Life. I'm Mirella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with David Parks, who had a healing in Medjugorje, a little village in Bosnia-Herzegovina, through Our Lady Queen of Peace's intercessory. Welcome to the program, back again. Good to be back again. Mirella. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. And so we we're talking a little bit about your singing. Mm. So tell us a little bit more. You, you're actually a professional singer now and you, yep. you perform all in Medjugorje regularly mm -hmm. and you've got CDs out and you're even here now in Australia doing a bit of a tour. So yeah, let's, let's hear I, about I that. Yeah, I was uh, a rock and roll singer mm -hmm. uh, in my halcyon days. Yeah. Uh, for eight years, when I was away from my faith, I was uh, a bit like St. Paul persecuting people. And then when I had this wonderful spiritual healing and physical healing in Medjugorje, I decided that I was going to work for the Lord. Mm. So I gave up uh, the music business to concentrate on doing Christian concerts. Mm -hmm. So since 1981, or since 1993, I beg your pardon, I've just toured the world, just doing wow. Christian concerts, telling people uh, God uh, is merciful, God is love, and that uh, miracles do happen. And what was the change in you? Because I know lots of people must know people who just don't have faith at all, mm -hmm. and they were, they're angry with God, mm -hmm. and they say all these things are caused by God. But what would you like that? And, and what was it that actually changed? Well, uh, I had no interest in religion. As I mentioned about Ken being extremely ill and uh, mm. being very close to death, um, I just felt after the healing that uh, God wanted me to do something for him. Like yeah. That was that uh, sensational in a sense. Uh, I went from having a paid job to going to work for the Lord and not knowing where the next Patriot. penny was coming yeah. from. Yeah. So wow. it was through the grace of Anne and the kids. They supported me when I mm. said, this is what I'd like to do. They said, well, OK, we'll support you. And how did you come to believe in God when you didn't believe in God earlier? Uh, Medjugorje was, was the, just, it was was the catalyst. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 totally convinced that Our Lady was there. And she brought me kicking and screaming to her son. Mm. You know, she knew that once I went there that her son was going to take care of her. And that's exactly what happened. And the first time you went, did you go with your wife to Medjugorje? Anne, Anne and I, we got yeah. a present of uh, two tickets, one for oh, so her so one they'd for been me. bought for you? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, yeah. isn't that beautiful? But uh, it, for me, it was to be my last holiday. Mm. I wasn't going in a pilgrimage. Yeah. I didn't want to go on a pilgrimage. God wasn't part of my life. Yeah. And then God reintroduced himself to me in the, in the graveyard. Wow. And uh, so after that then, I, I just knew. I yeah. knew God existed. Yeah. And now with your son, Ken, can you tell us a little bit about his yeah. experience? Uh, Ken uh, was born with cystic fibrosis. He's, as a young boy, he, he suffered. He spent a lot of time in hospital. And actually, when, when I had my healing in Medjugorje, when I came home, he got angry with God and actually he said to God, why did you heal my dad and not me? So Ken lost his faith, but as things happened, he went to Medjugorje with, uh, with a group of 20 Americans. His best friend from America was to go, but got quite sick beforehand. So Ken went and had the most incredible spiritual healing. Mm. He came home and told us, he said, look, dad, God did not make a mistake. He made me exactly the way he wanted me. He could have made me whole, but he didn't because he has something special for me. And he felt in this peace coming Absolute back to him. Absolute peace, yeah. So Ken went on, he, his health deteriorated in 2001. He had a double lung transplant. A young boy of 20 in Ireland died of meningitis and his parents made a huge sacrifice to allow his organs to be donated. And Ken had an amazing uh, transplant. And so he had a good recovery from it. He had a great recovery up to two years ago. So he had around about uh, 14 great years. And then he got sepsis and pneumonia two years ago. And uh, the lungs are practically shot again because mm. of the attack from sepsis. His heart is not great, 
his kidneys are gone in a sense they're not working mm. so ken is on home dialysis at the moment right. well we'll have to all and our viewers keep him in our prayers please do yeah. please do we'll kenny's do a wonder he's the greatest gift that you could ever have and his voice is like an angel yeah, yeah. kenny when i did uh, an album uh, I used to sing uh, in, in the concerts. I would say, oh, Ken wrote a song on his return from Medjugorje. So we went into the studio, we recorded with a full orchestra, and then people wrote and said, listen, by the way, we don't want you to sing it, we want Ken to sing it. So the version on the album is Ken crippled with the, the cystic fibrosis, difficult to catch a breath, and he sings a beautiful song called Far Away. And he was also having trouble when he sang that song, Absolutely. was he? Absolutely. Oh, he, was, he was in a terrible... He you, could hardly breathe. Yeah, you he would couldn't. never know to hear No, it. no, no. He's amazing. Amazing, yeah. You'd never Great know. Oh, my gosh. And so now you're in Australia. So what yep. brings you to Australia? Um, I came over... I was here for the first time 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, John Canavan from Divine Mercy Publications and Catherine O'Connor from Catherine O'Connor uh, Travel Agency. They sponsored my trip here to Australia. So this uh, trip, we were to Sydney, we were to Canberra, and we're in Melbourne. Uh, so I go then from Melbourne to Wellington in New Zealand mm -hmm. and do a Eucharistic conference there. And then I head back home to Ireland. Wow. And what will you be doing in Melbourne? Uh, Melbourne, uh, I will be in Nazareth House. Where, yeah. uh, and we will do a spiritual concert. A spiritual concert and mm. we'd be giving your experience as well testimony and uh, talking about um, how god uses our talents uh, and it doesn't matter what you are a tv presenter housewife house husband brain surgeon doctor it doesn't matter footballer or a singer he will use you to bring people to to him so through the gift that i have of the music and one of the gifts was to be able to use secular music to bring people to God. Mm -hmm. So I'll be sharing my testimony, stories about what happened to my family and sharing the gift of the beautiful voice that God has given me. Wow. And nowadays you spend how much time? You spend seven months. I spend year? roughly seven months in Medjugorje. I work for an Irish company called Marian Pilgrimages. And then the rest of the five months, I spend quite a lot of time at home. And then I would do a tour of America and uh, Australia. And talk, just give mm. the talks. So basically you want to ignite the faith in other people. Absolutely. Let people know we have to stand up and defend our Lord and defend our faith. It's so beautiful. Well, we've come to an end to the program, but thank you so much for gracing us here with your presence and telling us your story. It's wonderful to hear it. Thank you so much, Marilla. And we'll pray for you. And can you pray for us as oh, well? Oh, that goes without saying. It goes without saying. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. I'm Mirella Rich and our guest was David Parks. May God bless you and keep you all safe and happy. Goodbye.